Thanks for watching TechWiki. Click the subscribe button, then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. In a recent episode, we complained about confusing CPU naming schemes. But you know what? I think Wi-Fi revision nomenclature may be even worse. I mean, seriously. They started out with 802.11, which to the average person is about as meaningless as a promise about political campaign finance reform. And then they stuck a bunch of seemingly random letters on the end, like B, G, N, AC, and AC wave two, of all things. Now, the powers that be are giving us 802.11AX as our next Wi-Fi standard. So either they threw in an X to appeal to the younger generation, Taco Bell style, or there were in-between revisions that never made it into an end user product. We'll never know. What we do know is that Wireless AX does look like it's gonna bring some exciting improvements to your Wi-Fi experience, starting, perhaps unsurprisingly, with speed. Now, if you look at the spec on paper, you might notice that the maximum theoretical speed for the previous standard, Wireless AC Wave 2, is 866 megabits per second for a single stream, and then only 1201 for Wireless AX. So it's higher, but not a nearly six-fold increase like when we went from N to AC. But that is actually okay, because as some of you probably know, the theoretical maximum speeds for Wi-Fi are notoriously inaccurate anyway, and real-world performance can vary widely depending on range, obstacles, other signals in the air, and the quality of your access point and your device. So to address this, Wireless AX aims to improve efficiency in a number of ways to give you consistently higher real-world speeds than what you'd get with AC. Perhaps the biggest change is a feature called OFDMA Optima? Well, however you say it, what it does is chop up each wireless channel into many smaller partial channels, which allows up to 30 different gadgets to talk to the access point at once over a single channel instead of just one. Even though these sub-channels are smaller than the main channel, the access point gets more flexibility, allowing it to allocate bandwidth to each device based on its data needs. This should increase performance overall. OFDMA also works in tandem with multi-user MIMO. You can learn more about this up here, but the gist of it is that multi-user MIMO allows an access point to address multiple devices simultaneously instead of one at a time sequentially. And while multi-user MIMO was introduced for consumers with last-gen wireless AC, wireless AX improves on it, not only by allowing eight simultaneous streams instead of just four, but also by enabling it for both uploads and downloads. So uploading photos or streaming video from a crowded area like a trade show or a concert venue with wireless AX support should get a fair bit easier. Another cool feature is the addition of color. And no, I don't mean that Wireless AX will make the color on your crappy $200 notebook screen look better. Instead, it supports a feature called BSS Color, which is an identifier that is attached to each data chunk or frame to indicate what wireless network it came from. You see, access points typically wait to transmit if there's already another frame flying through the air. With BSS Color, an AP can tell which frames are coming from other networks and ignore them as long as they're below a threshold of weakness to prevent interference. This should help avoid unnecessary slowdowns. And if all these improvements aren't enough, Wireless AX can utilize both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands with tech companies currently trying to get even more spectrum in the 6 gigahertz range allocated to Wi-Fi and for your battery powered devices, it supports yet another new feature called target wake up time that allows gadgets to negotiate how often and for how long they will need to transmit or receive data. This allows the Wi-Fi transponder to sleep when transmission isn't necessary, which should help to preserve precious battery life once AX devices are available. But when will that be? Ah, I'm glad you asked. Well, the first devices will be routers, as usual, with early bird network vendors like ASUS planning mid-2018 launches. 
So, since the new standard is backwards compatible, you could make the upgrade early if you wanted to. And as for client devices, well, the word on the street is that phones and laptops will probably start hitting the consumer market sometime in 2019. TunnelBear is the simple VPN app that makes it easy to browse privately and enjoy a more open internet. With TunnelBear turned on, your connection is secured and your data is kept private from your internet provider, advertisers, or anyone who's looking to track you or profit from the data that you generate while you use services and browse the web online. TunnelBear has a top-rated privacy policy and does not log your activity, so try them out for free. There's no credit card required at tunnelbear.com slash Linus. We're going to have that linked below. It's tunnelbear.com slash Linus. So thanks for watching, guys. If you just like this video, you can do that, or you can like, or you can check out other channels, or comment with video suggestions, and subscribe. Woo!